Hello, my name is Mr Clayton Harding and I am the Head of Science at St Catherine's College. Welcome to my presentation where I'm going to spend a little bit of time introducing you to the ideas and some of the things that you can expect to think about and do when you come to St Catherine's College and study science in September. One of the most important things about science is being able to make observations. So that means looking around at the world around you, at the universe around you, and, and being interested in things and noting things down and recording your observations. Um, this photograph is shows uh, mayflies uh, emerging from a river. Quite amazing, they spend a long time under the water uh, but once they hatch, they have no mouths, and so they can only live for a day. And so they have to find a mate and reproduce, and then sadly they die. The next thing that scientists do after they've made their observations is to try and look for patterns in the observations. Now, the human brain is incredibly good at finding patterns and figuring things out. And that's what scientists do. They look for patterns and once they see those patterns, they test them a bit. Uh, this is a photograph of a galaxy um, taken by the Hubble telescope. So once we have come up with our patterns, we then try and think, hmm, why are these patterns here? What do they mean? Why do they exist? And so we're working really hard then to try and have an explanation. Now we can call an explanation a hypothesis or we can call it a model. And uh, what we then try and do is use these models so that we can understand the world we live in. Uh, this is a photograph of a black bear cub. Now when uh, black bears are cubs they are able to climb trees really really well and that's really really useful because the only thing that's really dangerous to a black bear cub is an adult black bear and adult black bears are rubbish at climbing trees so black bear cubs hide up trees if they feel a bit frightened so the next part of the process is to use the explanations that we have come up with to make predictions. And so our model or our, our hypothesis, if our model is correct, if it's, a, if it's a good explanation for what we've looked at, then we should be able to make a prediction. And uh, that is what we do. Then we get to the most fun part of science. We have our predictions. So how do we know if our predictions are going to be good? Well, we have to do experiments to see if they're good. We're testing our predictions. Now, those, those experiments can be just to make more observations or we set up specific um, tests and experiments to see what happens. So in the photograph here, we've got a green winged macaw, although it doesn't have very much green on its wings. And there are other parrots in the background. Now, these parrots in the rainforest eat lots of fruit and uh, often the fruit has poisons in it. And so they go to the rivers and on the, on the riverbanks are exposed um, parts of clay. And so the parrots land on the riverbanks and eat some of the clay because it makes their tummies feel better. So the results of our um, experiments are really, really interesting. If our experiment agrees with our prediction, then we know that our explanation is a good explanation. However, should our results not agree with our prediction, we have to go back and we have to change our explanation and come up with new predictions. And this is how scientific theories change and evolve. So physics is the first of the three types of science I'm going to talk about. So physics is more to do with um, the universe and uh, the world around us in quite an abstract way. And so we're covering things like electricity, forces, energy, space. Now, the photograph I've got here is actually a Hubble deep field image. There's more information about it on the next slide.
This is a photograph of probably one of the most famous and most expensive science experiments that has ever happened. So what we have here is a, a sort of an image of part of the Hadron Collider. So we're sort of looking into a tunnel that goes on for about 23 kilometres. Goodness only knows how much money uh, humanity has spent on this, but it has tested some amazing theories and has really improved our understanding of the universe. So in year seven at St. Catharines, you will look at topics to do with energy and the different types of energy and how we use energy in our society. Uh, forces, now that's really difficult to think about, but also really interesting, which kind of talks about how objects interact with each other and push and pull. Waves, now you might think, what, like waves on the sea? Well, yes, waves on the sea, but also light, and sound all come into this one. And then electricity, which is things like circuits uh, using cells and switches and bulbs and voltmeters and ammeters and things like that. So the next type of science I'm going to quickly talk about is chemistry. Now chemistry is really to do with the science of matter and how matter forms particles that we call atoms and how those atoms interact with each other. And the image I've got is actually a really great photographic version of something called the periodic table. And instead of just giving you the name of each element, it actually has a photograph, if one exists, of some of the, uh, well, of all of the elements that were discovered when it was made. This is a really fascinating idea from chemistry. So this beautiful thing, this diamond, is actually made of just carbon atoms. And it's to do with how the carbon atoms are bonded with each other that gives diamond its lovely sparkly properties. And it's also the hardest substance known to man. Bizarrely, this lump of coal is also made from carbon atoms. So I don't think you could find anything less like a diamond than a lump of coal, but they're made from the same atoms and chemistry helps us explain why they are different. This uh, slide also shows you carbon atoms joined together, but this time, bizarrely, the carbon atoms are joined together in a little tiny sphere. Now this sphere is so small, it's just ridiculous, but it is a sphere. It's kind of very similar to the sort of pattern you get on a football. Uh, and there was a very famous um, ar um, architect called Buckminster Fuller, and he used to build domes using this pattern long before we discovered that carbon atoms actually bonded in this way as well. In chemistry, in year seven at St. Catharines, you will be studying particles. Now, particles are what makes up everything. And then we go on and we do some interesting in chemistry and we look at chemicals like acids and their opposites, which are alkalis. And then we look a little bit more at particles and we start to try and describe things as atoms and elements. So that's what the alchemists spent hundreds of years doing. And uh, towards the end of year seven, we'll also study a little bit of geology and look at the structure of the earth. So the last type of science I'm going to talk about is biology. And biology is concerned by, with the study of living things. I've chosen for my image a great ape. It's not a chimpanzee. It looks very similar to a chimpanzee. It's actually a bonobo. And the crazy thing about bonobos, also known as pygmy chimpanzees, is that they are actually more similar to human beings than they are to ordinary chimpanzees. So one of the few areas of science, particularly in biology, where we really don't know very much is actually what consciousness is, what your thoughts actually are. Now we know that brain cells like this neuron exist, and we know that there are billions of them in your head and that they make trillions of connections with other things. But what actually is your, what is actually going on in your brain when you're having a thought? 
what's going on there. Now, this is a really exciting frontier in science. The last branch of science that you will study in, at St Catherine's in year seven is biology. Uh, you will start off by looking at cells, which are the tiny components of all living things. Then we will continue to study living things, look at the characteristics, what makes something alive. Uh, we'll do a bit of human biology and look at reproduction. And we will also look at ecology. Now, ecology describes the way that living things interact with each other. Well, that concludes my um, PowerPoint on science. Uh, we're really looking forward to welcoming you to St Catharines in September. Thanks very much and goodbye.